dear friends, welcome to Liz at Home. This is Liz Wright from Cape Town in South Africa. Today I'm going to be painting a dogwood rose in my Cardi sketchbook. It's made up of Cardi rag paper and I'm trying to do just flowers in this book. Here's a picture of what the flower looks like and I've sketched it out in my book and now I'm going to decide on the paints that I'm going to use and I'm just going to mix some up into my palette. The colours I'm using are going to be yellow ochre, hooker's dark green, I'm using a magenta and a mauve for the shadows. So I won't give you the brands, any of those sort of colours would work quite well. Um, and I'm making, mixing up quite a watery consistency of those into my palette that I'm going to start with. I thought of trying to do it just loose without sketching at first, but I haven't kind of quite reached that level yet. That's where I'm trying to get to. But it was easier to just sketch this. If you are keen to try and paint along with me and you would like a copy of the sketch let me know in the comments and I will make one available to you so just comment below if you'd like me to give you just a rough the way I sketched this image so I'm just going to do one flower and now I'm mixing this is quite a dark magenta, so I'm trying to add lots and lots and lots of water to it to get it more pale. I didn't want to add white to it. I want to use the white of the paper. So I'm adding a lot of water to make this a very watery mixture, and that will make it quite pale. It will make the value very light, as we've done in our previous Watercolor Wednesdays. And then I'm also just adding a little bit of water onto the yellow ochre to get it to activate. That I don't want to be too watery, but I want it to activate. So now I'm going to just add some of the mauve to the palette because I'm going to use that for the shadows and I want all my paints to be ready because I'm hoping to try and use a bit of the wet on wet technique to create the shadows. I'm rinsing my brush off and just dabbing it off on a paper towel. So now we're ready to begin. I've got myself organized and put my palette on my right hand side which I find works for me. I want to try and preserve the paper underneath it so I've put a piece of paper towel there and another my Caran d'Ache palette just so that it doesn't get spoiled. I'm trying to use both sides of the book, of this Cardi sketchbook, because I don't want to waste paper. But I'm a little bit worried about painting on the left-hand side of it, because the last picture I did didn't work so well. But let's just give it a, a try. I know that the picture would work way better on some arches paper or something. But this is a practice for me and probably for you guys if you're wanting to watch as well. I think most of my viewers, most of my subscribers that enjoy the watercolour are also beginners. And so I suspect you probably also don't have the very best paper. So I'm sort of saving my very best paper for when I feel I'm going to get it a bit better. And now I'm basically kind of colouring in my sketch. I first erased a lot of it so that the pencil marks don't don't stay looking don't don't keep showing up you can't erase them after you've added the watercolor I'm trying to learn by previous mistakes that i must dab my brush off after i load it with paint this is something interestingly enough that i can consistently forget to do and then I get what's called like a backwash of water which sort of chases the pigment away and uh, so I've been learning that you can see little bits of paint that are not spreading very well and this actually is a, a, an opportunity for me to blame my tools and not my, my problem. This is a paper problem. 
I think the sizing on this Cardi paper and the sizing perhaps on the back of the pages is not quite as good as it could be. So I'm just trying to even it out, but I'm going to run with it and hope for the best. Also struggling a little bit because it's quite hot here. So things are drying out and I suppose I should really be putting the shadows in while while the image, while the leaves, the petals are wet. And instead I'm doing what I kind of am used to when I use uh, colour pencils and things. Um, because there's a sketch I'm colouring in with the paint. Uh, so I can just wet each petal as I try to add the shadow in. I'm also letting the one side dry a little bit before adding the next one. And I think the colour is quite pretty. I actually love this colour. I can list the names of the pigments if you want them. I'm not going to unless you actually ask for them because I think we all have different paints and so if you specifically want to know which paints I use, please drop me a comment and I'll list them for you. So now I want to add some, to drop in some of the shadows and I'm going to be using the mauve for that. And uh, I want to, one usually goes where the petal sort of dips down. One can usually use that as a place to to add a shadow. And I'm trying to round this leaf off a bit. It's a little bit straight. And now I wanted that to bleed in, but the paint underneath is dried. So I'm first going to do all of these and then try and work around that and just add some water to the one side. And hope that it will bleed in. This one that's a little bit more damp is working better. I've just decided to fill the whole side in and then just drop some more while it's wet. Then I want this to be a shadow which doesn't need to bleed in quite as much as the others. But so I wet my brush and dried it off and I'm just drawing some of that dampness next to where I painted. Trying to give some shape to the leaves. I will do the center stamens and things when it's dried completely. That shadow is working a bit better. These are again my black velvet silver brushes. This is the size six and I absolutely love these brushes. You can't actually buy them in South Africa. I've looked and they don't seem to be in any of the South African stores. I got this one from Dick Blick. But they're really lovely. They come to such a nice point. Please excuse my slightly blocked nose. I'm sounding a bit nasal. I think I'm getting a little bit of a cold. I hope not. Maybe it's just allergies. So now I want to create the kind of look of a folded over petal. So I'm using the mauve here as well. You can see the little spots on the paper. I did see in somebody doing a class once where she said that the watercolour paper has expired and the sizing can create these sorts of things. I have not had mine for very long, so if it expired, it expired in the store. But uh, I think it's creating its own texture, so I'm not really too bothered by that look. And I quite like that there's a little bit of a highlight left by the, by the white there on that petal. And I'm going to just try and wet this bit so that we don't get any sharp lines. So, I'm now probably ready to start trying to do the leaves. 
and for the leaves I'm mixing up some hooker's green dark and the hooker's green dark that I've got is not a professional grade watercolor it's Winsor Newton Cotman so it's not quite as pigmented as the magenta that I was using so I'm just going to use some from my palette from this paint palette and move it onto the porcelain palette that I'm using. Just dipping, just resting my brush on the paper towel just to take the excess water off and now I'm trying to get a thin stem and again I'm just going around the image that I've drawn and kind of coloring the leaves in. I'm going to move forward to the next leaves and um, because I somehow managed to cut the painting of this off when I was filming so I apologize for that but I'll move on to the next lot. So I'm just pulling my brush along from the petal along to the end of the stem and then drawing the outline of the leaf and colouring it in and needing to add a little bit more water every here and there to the brush. And I am sort of wondering if I shouldn't just try drawing normal leaves the way that I normally do with a point down then belly of the brush and then lift the point up. I'm going to leave these leaf shapes to dry and I'm going to add the details of the little jagged ends to them later so that I'll be doing wet paint on the dry paint as a layer to add the detail and the texture. So this one again I'm drawing with the paintbrush and filling it in with paint. And then I'm going to do the next leaf in the same manner. I hope that you can see this well enough. I love this Hooker's Green Dark colour. I think it's such a nice muted sort of a colour. And I just love the thin lines that this brush can do. And I also... I'm really enjoying painting a flower. I hope that you're going to, that some of you will do this with me and enjoy doing it. I just decided to give it a go. and I want this one to have a slightly lighter value. So I'm adding a lot of water to the brush and just adding that and drawing the paint out from on the paper, not in the palette. You can see that the paper over here is quite smooth, so I think it is an actual problem of the sizing on this paper. So I'm going to just take a little bit more paint directly from the palette and drop that in on this last leaf. And now I think I'm going to try doing this normal technique of the point down, belly of the brush point up and then fill in the middle. I think it gives, a, it's actually such fun to do and it gives a nice leaf shape. Just going to try and fill in those little bits. And then I think of maybe just doing some little feathery bits of stem or something without putting an actual leaf on them just to add some texture and interest. And maybe I'll fill in the top. And I'm not sure I might do some on the left, but I think perhaps I'll just leave 
the left hand side of this. I'll make a decision just now. And then I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll come in to fill in the stamens just now. The background is dried and I've added a little bud and some extra leaves onto the left hand side and filled in the middle, the center, with a thick, uh, quite strong paint consistency of yellow ochre. And still using that, I'm using a thin size four brush to pull out some stamens from that center and just gently going around with those, I decided it needed a little bud or something. So I checked online to see what dogwood rosebuds, wild rosebuds looked like, and they look much the same as normal rosebuds. So uh, my friend has actually got a creeper rose like this. I didn't actually realize that that was a, called a dogwood rose, but it's, yeah, they're quite pretty flowers in my opinion so I'm just pulling out as thin as I can from the center and then I think I need to try and add a little bit of darker things in the middle as well just to get a bit more texture showing and then I also We'll need to do like little dots on the ends of these. So I've done some long and some short to kind of mimic nature. So just doing little dots around the edge with them. Isn't it funny how sometimes a fault, like for instance here, what I think is the problem with the sizing actually adds to an image because I quite like that sort of semi-spottedness on the petals, which is nothing to do with my painting. It's a fault on the paper. And uh, I think it's actually added to it in a very strange way. So now I'm going to use some burnt umber and I'm going to just dot that a bit around the middle I'm just transferring a little bit onto my other palette and then just doing a couple of little dots just to add some shadows and interest to the image. One can't just have flat color as you can sort of see with the leaves, those leaves that have got a bit of a difference in color or a lighter value look more interesting and I'm going to be adding the middle lines and veins and that sort of thing as well and I want to make them look a little bit prickly on the outside. Always dab the excess onto your paper towel. I'm going to try and do the outside of the bud and to do that I'm using again the dark hookers green and just sort of making up something to put on there uh, I'm needing to add some more hookers green to my palette quickly I never put a lot on there because I really don't like throwing away paint and every now and then one's got to wash the palette. I know I could just mix other things on top of it. I get a little bit not confident enough to do that. I must allow myself to one day. Now I want to make this green darker so I'm adding a sepia to the hookers green and then I'm adding a bit more hookers green and just doing it until it's a nice dark green so that I can do the veins on the leaves and details like that to make it look pretty and make it stand out just to add some details. So still using, this is actually a size 2 brush, it's not a size 4 brush, it's also the silver black velvet. It is such a nice brush. I know I keep raving about it, but 
Oh my word, I've never been able to draw such thin lines as this. I definitely must put a link to this in my more information, just in case you're interested. They're not cheap, <laughs> but you can, I, I don't see them as singles on Amazon. I see a set that's got a size two and a six, and I can't remember the other size, but I'll put a link for you in case you're interested. It is such a great brush. I'm so scared I'm going to mess it up because uh, it's quite hard to get for me. I've got to kind of bring it in from Dick Blick and that costs me a lot of money. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm really looking after my brushes at the moment. I like my Craftimo brushes very much as well, but I've never found a brush like this that's so fine and allows one to make these incredible fine lines. It's it's like a revelation to me. It really is. It's like, wow, this is happening. So with these stem, with these vein thingies, I'm I had this idea of trying to extend them over the edge of the leaf to kind of make the, you know, when you've got leaves that are, are, are kind of have a bit of a razor edge, I thought I'm going to extend these veins and do that. I'm not sure if I should do a little triangle at the end of them or not, but I'm going to wait for them to dry and just see what it looks like. And as this is not really so fascinating to watch. I think I'm going to fast forward through the rest of drawing these veins. The one thing that I have learned when doing these little sideways veins to make them look more natural is to make sure that you have a curve to them. Very little in nature seems to be absolutely ramrod straight. I sometimes tend to make mine a little bit too straight. But um, I don't know if you can see that they are going over the edge and they are creating the look of sort of jagged leaves. What do you like painting? Do you enjoy painting patterns? Do you enjoy painting flowers? Do you enjoy painting landscapes? What is your, what would you like to see me doing more of on my channel on my Watercolour Wednesdays? I actually look forward to these Watercolour Wednesdays because I just love doing the watercolours and uh, recording for my channel keeps me quite busy. So I don't get a hang of a lot of extra time just to do my own thing. A lot of the stuff I'm doing is just for the channel. Um, and I really value you watching and I want to thank you. I seem to be getting a lot more subscribers, which is absolutely delightful to me. Thank you so much. You're all so valued and so welcome here. So we've just about finished all of these little veins. Oh dear, oh dear I discovered I was a little bit off screen there. So now I'm just looking at it and seeing what else needs doing. And I think I need more of the dark texture in the middle of the flower just to create more interest. I'm using a darker color now than I did before. I'm using a very dark brown just to do some extra. It's a dark, dark. It's not a dark umber. I can't actually remember the name of it. But um, it's a very dark brown. It's on my palette and I'm just using that, doing a couple of little dots and then pulling a few pieces out, which makes an interestingly enough quite a big difference to the piece. So now I don't like this shadow here. I feel the line is too dark. So I've decided I'm going to see if I can fix it, which is a bit dangerous with the stamens going over it. So I've just covered it with a little bit of clear water and I've picked up now a sort of a more bluey mauve which is bleeding into the clear water and now I've added more clear water onto my brush and sort of dried it off on the paper and I'm pulling this out a bit 
and hoping against hope that I can make it all blend in nicely so that it looks just more organic to the petal. I want that sort of shadow there. I think perhaps I need to add a bit more magenta on the one side, but I do need to get the whole petal of an even wetness. The amount of water makes a huge difference to what things look like. That's already looking better, I think. Just want to make sure this is all evenly wet, evenly damp. And there we go. So it looks like our little dog Rose is finished. And I'm just going to clear away all my stuff and let you see. I thought of flicking some paint splotches on it, but I'm a bit nervous to do that. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And I hope you've enjoyed painting this with me and joining me. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye, friends.